Welcome to Financial Analysis. So, we will be looking at what is financial analysis, four categories of financial ratios, techniques of financial of ratio analysis, <coughs> distortion in financial reporting, and of course, a summary conclusion. So, our learning objectives, number one, calculate financial ratio that measure profitability, asset utilization, liquidity, and debt utilization. Number two, examine the ratios in comparison to industry, industry averages. Three, interpret ratios and identify corrective actions for abnormal results. And number four, identify sources of distortion reported income. So what is financial analysis? Financial analysis is about evaluating a firm's financial performance. And of course, uh, previously we looked at the different financial statements that we use to determine a company's uh, financial performance. So how do we evaluate the company's financial performance. By calculate one way, one way of doing that is by calculating ratios to reveal relationship between different accounts of financial statements. By linking ratios to reveal the factors determining a firm's uh, profitability and value, and financial analysis may or may not answer uh, questions, but could lead to further inquiry. So, the four areas of ratios that we will be looking at are profitability ratios, asset utilization ratios, liquidity ratios, and debt utilization ratios. So, profitability ratios show how profitable a company is. Okay? So, there are four main profitability ratios. We have profit margin, gross profit margin, return on assets or investments, and return on equity, which is normally um, common shareholders' equity. So, how do we find profitability ratios? So, profit margin is equal to net income over sale. And this is usually what percentage of net income, what percentage of sale is net income. Similarly, gross profit is equal to gross profit over sales. And again, what percentage of gross profit, what percentage of sales is gross profit? Equally, because gross profit is equal to sales minus cost of goods sold, so you could also say what percentage of sales is the cost of sales or the cost of goods sold. So return on assets is net income over total assets. So, how much is uh, the assets of a company being able to generate income? And that would be net income over total assets. What percentage of net in of total assets was your net income? And return on equity would be net income over shareholders' equity. And again, what percentage of net of shareholders' equity was net income? Or how much does, uh, what was the percentage of um, net income that was generated given investment made 
by shareholders. So asset utilization ratios show how effective a company uses its assets. So the ratios that we use to analyze that would be receivable turnover, average collection period, inventory turnover, inventory holding period, accounts payable turnover, accounts payable period, the capital asset turnover, the total asset turnover. So asset utilization ratio, how do we find those? So receivable turnover would be sales over receivable. While average collection period would be accounts receivable over average daily credit. And of course, these two um, are what help us in how long an average do customers account stay on the books. So either of these could be used to do that evaluation. Right. Inventory turnover and inventory holding period are also both could be used to determine how sales per dollar of inventory and in efficiency and efficiency of inventory ordering and cost are method. So it's help us to determine those. And um <coughs> inventory turnover is found by cost of goods sold divide by inventory and inventory holding period would be inventory divided by average daily cost of goods sold now accounts payable turnover and accounts payable period both help us to identify the effective use of trade credit as opposed to bank credit and accounts payable turnover is found by cost of goods sold divided by accounts payable and accounts payable period is equal to cost payable divided by the average daily purchases or cost of goods sold Capital asset turnover and total asset turnover both help us uh, to answer question is, is there appropriate amount of capital being deployed in the firm to support sales or is reinvestment occurring at the appropriate uh, time? And the capital asset turnover would be sales over capital assets or total assets divide by, uh, or sorry, t total asset turnover would be sales divided by total assets. So how about liquidity ratios? Liquidity ratios show how liquid a company is or how much cash it has to meet its short-term needs. So will the company be able to meet its short-term obligations um, usually within say a year so the ratios are current ratio and quick ratio or the acid test so liquidity ratios current ratio will be equal to current assets over current liabilities so as the current assets of the company able to cover the current liabilities of a company. A more stringent test on liquidity would be the quick ratio. So the quick ratio would um, be more stringent because what we'll do is to remove the most 
what what we'll be doing is to move, remove the most illiquid assets of all current assets and the most illiquid asset would be inventory so if we remove inventory from the current assets and then see if a company would be able to still meet its short-term obligations so the quick ratio or the asset test would therefore be current assets minus inventory divided by current liabilities how about debt utilization ratios is how show how well a company is managing or using debt so the ratios are usually debt to total assets times interest earned and fixed charge cover so let's start with debt utilized uh, with uh, debt to total assets which is the total debt divides by total assets and it is what percentage of total assets is actually financed by debt so how risky is this company um, from say from a uh, perspective of an investor or a creditor given it's already exposure to debt how much of its its uh, investment or how much of its assets are financed by debt and by extension how much uh, how invested is uh, the shareholders in this company how much uh, capital did they put in the company how much uh, what portion of the assets is financed by equity so those are some of the questions we could answer from the debt to total assets times interest earned would be income before interest and taxes divided by interest expense so in other words is the company able to pay its interest is it able to pay its interest um, income before interest and taxes minus not sorry not minus but divides by interest will tell you if a company is able to pay its interest fixed charge coverage so fixed charge coverage is going a bit further it's saying is the company able to cover its fixed charges so it take income before fixed charges and taxes divided by fixed charges so one of those fixed charges would be interest and there could be other fixed charges that for example lease of a property that um, could be part of the company's um, financial statement now uh, if the company is unable to operate those fixed charges would still have to be paid so that's why it's usually called fixed charges so is the income that company currently um, generating is that able to cover its fixed charges so let's look at an example and uh, we have here an income statement for Saxton company and it's for the, the year 20xx we have sales of 4 million it says all on credit so we make note of that gives us cost of goods sold 
and then we have gross profit so as you can see gross profit is equal to sales minus cost of goods sold so then we have selling and administrative expenses and here we have an asterisk so that asterisk tells us that it includes five hundred fifty thousand dollars in lease payments next we produce our operating profits or earnings before interest and taxes so next we have interest expense extraordinary loss and then net income before taxes we have taxes or with a tax rate of 50 percent produces an income net income of two hundred thousand so here is the balance sheet So as of December 31st, going to XX, company shows as, um, assets starting with cash of 30,000, then marketable securities 50,000, accounts receivable 350,000, inventory 370,000, to have total current assets of 800,000. Net plant and equipment of 800,000 so total assets are 1.6 million on the other hand <coughs> liabilities and shareholders equity it has accounts receivable of 50,000 notes payable of 250,000 so its total current liabilities would be 300,000 and long term liabilities of 300,000 for a total li liabilities of 600,000. Common stock of 400,000 and retained earnings of 600,000. So these two here would represent what's called owner's equity or shareholder's equity. 400,000 plus the 600,000. So when we add these two to our total liabilities of 600,000, we have our 1.6 million. And remember again, from the perspective of the accounting equation, total assets, 1.6 million is equal to total liabilities plus owner's equity. And that also gives us 1.6 million. So from here we can see that the profit margin for a Saxon company would be net income. And we have net income of 200,000 and we have sales of 4 million. Therefore, it's 200,000 divided divide by 4 million to give us a 5%. It's also telling us that the industry's average is 6.5%. So uh, this company is performing at less than industry average. Gross profit would be 1 million divided by 4 million. So you can see here that we have gross profit of 1 million and sales of 4 million. Therefore, gross profit would be 25% compared to the industry's average of 22%. How about return on asset? to be net income over total assets and net income over total assets here 
is now allowing us to compare information from two different financial statements. So the income would be from the income statement, and of course, remember net income to be 200,000 because we found it for and used it before previously here. So <coughs> net income would be from the income statement, and then it's 200,000, and we know the total asset from our balance sheet would be 1.6 million therefore we have net income over total assets to be 200,000 over 1.6 million to be 12.5 uh, percent alternatively Returning assets and that our return on investment could be found by taking net income divided by sales and then multiplying that by sales divided by total assets. So either of these would give us the same answer of 12.5%. Return on equity can be found by net income divided by shareholders' equity. And we know the net income was 200000 sorry. And we remember from our balance sheet that shareholders' equity would be common stock. Common stock plus retained earnings and those were sum to 1 million so it would be 200,000 divided by 1 million to give us 20 percent and we compare that with the industry's average of uh, 15 uh, percent alternatively we could find returning equity by using the equity multiplier. Equity multiplier, total assets over equity, which would be 1.6 for total asset, divide by equity of 1 million, and that's equal to 1.6. <coughs> then we can find returning equity. <coughs> equity by multiplying return asset by the equity multiplier. And when we multiply return asset, remember we found return and asset earlier to be 12.5% or 0 0.125. And so 0 0.125 multiplied by the equity multiplier of 1.6 will give us over 20%. Receivable turnover would be sales, credit sales, divided by receivables. Again, the linking different financial statements. So sales would be, if we remember, sales would be 4 million, and it did say it's all on credit. Receivable would be 350,000. So therefore, receivable turnover would be four million over three hundred and fifty thousand, or eleven point four times. So 
your receivable is being turned over much faster than the industry. Uh, we're converting it into cash uh, much faster than the industry. So average collection period is conceivable over average daily credit sale. So here we have conceivable of three hundred and fifty thousand and average daily credit sales. An average daily credit sales would be sales which we already know defined by the number of days in the year which we normally use 365 and so that gives us 10959 and therefore <coughs> in case of subtan would be 32 days so the company Again, it tells you that a company is converting its receivables into cash in a shorter time than the industry. So inventory turnover would be cost of goods sold divided by inventory. And remember, from our income statement that the cost of goods sold would be three million and if we go to our balance sheet we will see that the inventory is three hundred and seventy thousand so it would be three million divided by three hundred and seventy thousand or eight point one times <coughs> so inventory holding period gain would be inventory divided by the average daily cost of goods sold so we know that cost of goods sold is 3 million divided by 365 so again you can see that a company is holding inventory for less days than the industry average so in less days it's able to take it inventory and to have it being sold to its customers. How about accounts payable turnover? So accounts payable turnover, we already know cost of goods sold, and it will be cost of goods sold over accounts payable. So we already know cost of goods sold to be three million and we go to a balance sheet for accounts payable. It tells us here that accounts payable is fifty thousand. Therefore, three million over fifty thousand would equal to sixty times compared to the industry of 12 times an accounts payable period would be accounts payable divided by average daily purchases or cost of goods sold the average daily cost of goods sold so in this case we have 50,000 over 8219 which is 
the average daily cost of goods sold and that gives us six days compared to the industry's average of 30 days so company is paying its its creditors at much faster rate than the industry what about capital assets turnover capital asset turnover would be sales over capital assets we already know sales to be 4 million so let's see what is capital assets so we go to our income statement here and we look for capital assets so we have current assets of 800,000 so capital assets would be those long-term assets are those non-current assets and so non-current assets in this case represent 800,000 in net plant and equipment so our capital assets would be 800,000 so therefore it sales of 4 million divide by capital assets of 800,000 and we see that it's 5 times compared to the industrial average of 5.4 times in total assets turnover will be sales over total assets and we already know total assets to be 1.6 million right 800,000 in current assets plus 800,000 in non-current assets so we have 4 million divided by 1 uh, divided by 1.6 million and that gives us 2.5 times let's look at our liquidity ratio uh, let's look at Saxton uh, company liquidity ratios its current ratio would be current assets over current liabilities and we know our current assets to be 800 Thousands. So let's see what the current liabilities <coughs> and it says here current liabilities would be 300,000 so it would be 800,000 over 300,000 or 2.67 compared to the industry average of 2.67 one so it's telling you that this company here is able to meet its obligations in the short term in terms of its current liabilities um, given its current assets by 2.67 times so it's, it can use its current assets to cover its current liabilities 2.67 times A quick ratio which I said is a more stringent one so it's a uh, it's, uh, uh, stronger test of liquidity would be current assets minus inventory divided by current liabilities so it will also tell you if the company has a lot um, um, or too much tied up in inventory so we know inventory and we have found it before to be 370,000 or we can go directly to the balance sheet and you see inventory of 370,000 so it would be 800,000 minus 370,000 which gives us 430,000 and then that will be divided by the current liabilities of 300,000 and that is equal to 1.3 times so again we can see 
that the company is outperforming the industry average because it's 1.3 compared to 1. So, in, uh, the, um, from an industrial, from an industrial perspective, the company is doing even better than the industry who are normally able to cover uh, its current asset, it's using the quick ratio, able to cover its current liability only one time, but this company is uh, at 1.43 times. Debt utilization ratios. So if we start with debt to total assets, we have total debt, divided by total assets, and we have total debt and we go to our balance sheet, make sure, check our numbers, and we're looking for total debt, which would be total liabilities, and we see that total debt, total liabilities, total liabilities would be 600,000, which represents our total debt, and We know our total assets already to be 1.6 million. So total debt, the total assets would be 600,000 divided by divided by 1.6 million, and it's 37.5 percent. Now it's higher than the industrial average, but it's it's probably still okay. I mean, um, and it's, it's industry average is 33 compared to the 37.5 percent. So it depends on the industry. In some industry, it it may be okay for it to be as high as 50 percent. In the banking industry, for example, it could be as high as 90%, but it depends on the industry. A rule of thumb is that it should be uh, probably be less than the 50%. So given that this is less than uh, 40%, it could be still considered to be okay. Time interest earned. So, we go to our income statement and we know that the interest before income, interest, what am I saying? I should be saying our operating profit or earnings before interest and taxes. We know that to be 500,000 and we know interest expense to be 50,000. So, Therefore, we know that this would be 550 divided by 550,000, and that would be 11 times. So, this company is able to cover its interest 11 times. So, again, it's, it's, it's doing much better than the industry. How about fixed charges? <coughs> so fixed charges would be income before fixed charges and taxes divide by fixed charges. So how do we find income before fixed charges and taxes? So it's income, so we go to our income statement. So here's our income statement and we can see that it tells us that includes fifty thousand dollars in lease payment and we know that a lease payment would be a fixed charge because whether the company is operating or not it will have to pay fifty thousand dollars to its to its um the person to its, its person who it has the lease with, right? So we know that income before fixed charges 
we will have to add fifty thousand dollars back to over five hundred and fifty thousand we will be adding fifty thousand dollars to that and the fixed charges would be our income the fixed charges would be in interest expense of fifty thousand plus our fixed charges of uh, lease payment of fifty thousand so in total our fixed charges is going to be one hundred thousand again it would be fifty thousand from the lease payment and fifty thousand from interest expense and income before fixed charges would be the operating profit plus the fifty thousand that is included here for lease so that will be six hundred thousand over a hundred thousand So here we see it's 600,000 divided by 100,000 and that's equal to 6 times. So here we're able to break down each of them into favorable versus unfavorable. So we can see um, in the analysis if we are doing industry comparison that the profit margin was below the industry average but and the gross profit margin was also below industry average returning asset was above industry average and that's due to high turnover return on equity is 20 percent and it's good due to two ratios ratio 2 and 11. In the asset utilization, we have 11.1% for receivable turnover, 11.4 times for receivable turnover, and that was good. We have 32 days for average collection period, which is you're collecting much faster than the industry, so you will have more cash, much, uh, you have more, your cash in your hand much quicker than the industry so that's good inventory turnover is 8.1 times or uh, every 45 days inventory is being turned over so it's much faster than the industry again that's good account stable turnover would be 60 um, times our account stable period would be 6 days so the company is actually paying its its creditors much faster than the industry so you're giving out money much quicker than the rest of the industry so it will be considered unfavorable at all and we have capital asset turnover of five um compared with asset turnover of 2.5 times which is much better um, for total asset and below industry for capital asset turnover. In terms of liquidity ratio, we can see that um, compared to the industry, in both cases, the company is doing much better than industry. Debt utilization, we have 37% compared uh, to 37.5 percent compared to 33 percent and slightly more debt but uh reasonable it's reasonable because it's 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 below 50 percent so it's reasonable again it would also depend on the kind of industry the times interest earned would be 11 times and of course now the industry is about seven so that's good and fixed interest charges would be six uh, times and normally industry would be 5.7 so again that is also good so 
comparing a company's ratio to the industry average or industry leaders may not always be appropriate. So it may not always be appropriate to compare a company's ratio to the industry. So um, another way of comparison would be trend analysis. So um, over time, is this company doing better or is it doing worse? Is this company's profit growing or is it going, um, is it shrinking or is it not growing? So those are some questions you could answer using uh, trend analysis. And so over the course of the business cycle, the cost of sales and profit fluctuation yearly ratio analysis may not uh, present an accurate uh, picture because um, things may fluctuate. So sometimes it is difficult for you to get an accurate picture. Uh, comparing the same company's ratio on a year-to-year -year basis is what is trend analysis and it may reveal whether ratios are improving or worsening over the length of the, the of a longer time cycle. Now you do have discussion in financial statements so before an analysis is done you have to be clear as to what sale are having in the financial statements what are the numbers what does the numbers represent to make sure that you are not comparing apples with oranges or the proper comparison is being made so historical historical base accounting in an environment of changing prices may distort financial statement so immediate effect of price changes for example inflation or disinflation and revenue versus delayed impact and asset. So, in other words, the, the, the impact of price changes if there is high inflation may occur um, almost immediately on changing prices, but assets would not, it would not affect the assets immediately unless you go out and purchase assets about the same time. But if a company has, um, so the com you could purchase assets in a period of high inflation. And it is now it's being compared with assets purchased in a period of low inflation, or vice versa. So you have to be aware of that. Accrual based accounting allows certain leeway in matching the revenue and expenses. So accounting in accounting, there is usually accounting policies that set by management, and those policies could determine the valuation of the certain assets, for example, inventory or cost of goods sold, is it value using last in, first out, or is it value using first in, first out? So it's important, again, to make sure that um, the analysis that is being done is being done using um, comparing uh, inventory that be, being aware that the inventory that you're comparing, how is it being, uh, how the value of that inventory is determined. So assets write down as well. I mean, some assets are, uh, companies may decide to write some assets down because um, they may anticipate that the useful life of the asset is much shorter than they actually uh, thought it was initially. So that could cause some um, distortion again in how that is presented as well and of course these could have um, effect on how you determine your net income so all these would have to be taken into account be aware of what is happening in the financial statement so that the comparison can make um, sense or the comparison that is being done can be as 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 reasonable. So in conclusion, we look at four financial ratios covered four years of 
management, profitability, utilize, uh, profitability, asset utilization, liquidity, and debt utilization. We have ratio should be compared to industrial average for comparative analysis, as well as historical data for trend analysis. What ratios do is to suggest aspects requiring further exploration. So it is the manager's or the analyst's job to answer questions revealed by ratio. So when 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 a ratio is determined, um, it may not necessarily answer the question that you are looking for, but it may tell you to go dig further, to look in behind the numbers, see how the accounting policies develop, see um, what how management values inventory, for example, and how that has an impact on cost of goods sold and any on gross profit or on net income. And last, analysts should also be aware of distortion in financial statement. So with that, we conclude this session and we will then meet and go through the various questions that help us to further understand uh, this area. Thank you.